My name's Braxton Hafen. I'm Trent Hafen. I'm Mary Jane Ranch Hafen. And I'm here to talk about the disease of addiction and recovery and everything in between. Grew up around alcoholism and addiction and seen a lot myself that would make uh, most people want to stay away from it, and it did for a long time. Um, I didn't start using until I was about 18. My addiction progressed really, really quickly. You know, I was, uh, I was a good student. I had a lot of friends. I had a good family support. My grandparents, their example and their uh, stability. My dad was a doctor. My mother was a doll. She was gorgeous. But everybody would ask me what was the matter with my mom. When I worked for my dad, my mom would be in the back room waiting until my dad would give her some drugs. And I saw him give her things that he thought would help her get off the drugs. She shot herself in the shoulder and it lodged. And I thought that that was my trial in life. Little did I know that my children, grandchildren, would be addicted to drugs. It was fun in the beginning. I felt like it enhanced. I used continuously. I used before I went to bed. I used when I woke up, and I used every few hours throughout the day. When I started to live this double life, and it started to tear me inside, because um, I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't want to stop. It all caught up to me eventually, like it always does. You know, people find out, you start to change. I, I did all those things, in and out of jail, swearing that I would never do it again, trying to go back to how it was in the beginning. You know, the only time I ever remember coming to and thinking and feeling the guilt and shame is when I had luckily been, been locked up and put in a detox cell in jail. Your heart's racing, you got the cold sweats, and you're feeling all these feelings and emotions that you've been running from for so long and they're intensified. That's when I started to feel like uh, my life wasn't mounting up to what I wanted it to be, and I, I hit that bottom that we talk about. I didn't care if I lived or died. I couldn't do it by myself. I needed, I needed help. I needed uh, other people like myself that were doing something different. And I remember seeing my dad back then and, and the desperation and the confusion, and I realized that, uh, that he's an addict, that he's an alcoholic, and that uh, he was caught in the midst of his own personal hell. My first drink was at age six, and my last drink was at age 50. I knew when I, when I hit the rooms of AA, that was my second chance in life. I went in the rooms knowing nothing. I just wanted a better life. This week is my two-year chip, where I pick up my chips. I say these two years sober have been the best two years of my life. And now I'm on the other side of the coin. I'm helping people. I'm of service. I chair a meeting. Don't look him up down the road. You do one day, and you stay sober for that one day, and that day turns into weeks. Those weeks turn into months, and those months have turned into two years. I admire him a lot for getting sober when he did at his age with his circumstances. When you're ready to hear it, you'll hear it. I've seen enough of the light to where I know where the, the real answer is and where the real hope is. I got clean November 16th of 2011. I was able to become employable and get back into the workforce and become a valuable employee and I'm completely out of debt. I got married six months ago to an, to an awesome woman that's also in recovery and, uh, and we communicate and we're there for each other when we're both headed in the same direction and we get each other. I was born an addict. I have the disease of addiction. I actively used for about 10 years and I've been clean for almost four and I'm heavily involved in a 12-step fellowship because that's where the answer is.